we're still talking about continuity and in this section we'll look at some examples uh, dealing with the continuity of piecewise functions and piecewise functions as you know have one function definition for certain x values and then another function definition for other x values and they may exist in two or more pieces so let's look at some examples here this first one is f of x is 5x plus 3 this is a line and the y value will be computed with this little expression if x is less than negative 1 and the, the line there is obviously continuous and f of x is x cubed plus 5 in other words we would compute the value of the function the y value with this expression if x is greater than or equal to negative 1 and this is a cubic curve and that's continuous the question is at this value negative 1 at an x value of negative 1 do these two curves meet up so let's think about the limits from the left and from the right the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left of this function okay left of negative 1 is this x is less than negative 1 and as we get really close to negative 1 the value of the function gets really close to this expression with a negative 1 plugged in there. So we can just compute that 5 times negative 1 plus 3 and that's a trivial comp computation. It comes out to negative 2. And then let's think about the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right. Okay, if x is if we're approaching negative 1 from the right, then x is a little bit greater than negative 1. So we use this expression and that's going to be negative 1 cubed plus 5 and that's negative 1 plus 5 which is 4 and so these are not the same the left and right limits both exist but they are not the same so the function is not continuous that's the answer to the question we're trying to, term to determine if the function is continuous and specifically if it's continuous at this x value where the definition changes and in this case the answer is no okay next example f of x is equal to 3x minus 2 if x is less than 3 and x squared minus 74 or excuse me x to the fourth minus 74 if x is greater than or equal to 3 so again we think about the limits from the left and the right and this time it's the limit as x approaches 3 from the left of f of x and the limit as x approaches 3 from the right and we'll evaluate both of these if both of these exist and are the same then the function is continuous at that point okay so 3x minus 2 if x is getting really close to 3 then 3x minus 2 is just 3 times 3 minus 2 which is 7 so that was easy this one's not too bad either 3 to the fourth minus 74 well 3 to the fourth is the same as 9 times 9 that's 81 and 81 minus 74 is 7 and then we should also take note of this we should also take note that the value of the function at 3 f of 3 is equal to 7 because right here if x is greater than or equal to 3 this computation applies when x is equal to 3 and when we do that with x equals 3 we get 7 so the left and the right limits both exist and they are equal to the value of the function at that point so therefore the function is continuous now a lot of times on a test or on an exam and especially on the AP exam you might see a problem like this and you're told justify your answer that's part of the statement of the problem or you're told give a reason for your answer and you need to write some information and you would need to include all three of these calculations here the limit as x approaches three from the left from the right and the value of the function and show that that this limit exists the limit as x approaches 3 and you might even want to say you might even want to want to take these two ideas together and say the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x is equal to 7 so the limit exists and the limit of the function is equal to the value of the function at 3 and that's the full argument then you can say therefore 
of the function is continuous. And you might even want to write out, if this is an AP exam, your, uh, your job is to convince the person grading the exam that you understand this material and understand it correctly. So you might even want to write out in English, write out the limit of the function is equal, the limit of the function as x approaches 3 is equal to the value of the function at x equals 3. Therefore, the function is continuous at x equals 3. If they say, give a reason for your answer or justify your answer, they're looking for some kind of logical reasoning like that. And don't forget this step right here. That's easy to leave out. Okay, let's look at one more example f of x is negative x squared minus 4 if x is less than 1 and x to the fourth minus 6 if x is greater than or equal to 1 so does this limit or, or does the is this function continuous at x equals 1 so let's think about the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of f of x and the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of f of x so as x approaches 1 from the left, well, x will be a little bit less than 1. So this is going to be negative 1 squared minus 4. Be careful right here. Negative 1 squared is negative 1. Remember, we do this squared first before we apply that negative sign. So that's negative 1 minus 4, which is negative 5. And then as x approaches 1 from the right, x will be a little bit greater than 1. So this is going to be 1 to the 4th minus 6, which is just 1 minus 6, which is negative 5. And then we, we note that the limit from the left side and the right side are both the same. So, so the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x exists, and it equals negative 5. And then let's also consider the value of the function at 1, f of 1. Well, if x is equal to 1, that's a greater than or equal, then we use this, so it's just 1 to the 4th minus 6, it's negative 5, and so the limit of the function is equal to the value of the function, therefore the function is continuous at that point. The function is continuous at x equals 1. In this case, it's actually continuous everywhere, but specifically we were asked, is it continuous at the point where the definition changes? And the answer is yes.